man fall overboard. Preparing for the worst case scenario at sea, this will see on this video. Modern ships, including ferries and cruise liners, are equipped with various safety features. Yet despite these precautions, overboard incidents still occur. Safety measures on ships range from physical barriers like railings and nets, to electronic systems such as man overboard alarms. Not to mention crew members are trained in emergency response procedures. But even with these safeguards in place, the unfortunate reality is that people can and do fall overboard. This is where time becomes a crucial factor. When someone falls overboard, every second counts. The immediate response of both crew and passengers can significantly influence the outcome. It's a race against time, a fight against the elements. Safety measures are in place to reduce risk, but they can never eliminate it entirely. Remember, safety at sea is everyone's responsibility. Let's ensure we're all prepared to act quickly and effectively in the face of danger. The first few moments after someone falls overboard are critical. Panic and confusion can easily set in, but there's no time for that. Immediate action is key. If someone witnesses the incident, they should shout man overboard as loud as possible, alerting everyone on the ship. Pointing continuously towards the person in the water is also crucial, as it helps maintain visual contact. The next step is to throw a life ring. This isn't just to provide something for the person to grab onto. Attached to the life ring, you'll often find a smoke signal. Once activated, it creates a visible marker, helping the person in the water and acting as a reference point for the search efforts. Simultaneously, the ship's bridge should be alerted. They can initiate the necessary safety protocols, including the ship's maneuvers to circle back. Every second counts, and the initial response can save lives. Maneuvering a ship back to a person who has fallen overboard is a complex task. This task becomes all the more complicated when you factor in the size of the ship, the sea conditions, and the distance to the person in the water. There are several maneuvers that are commonly used during man overboard situations. One of these is the Williamson turn, a maneuver that involves turning the ship in a specific way to circle back to the person in the water. This maneuver is particularly useful for large vessels, but it can be time consuming and requires a significant amount of space. Another common maneuver is the Sharnov turn. This maneuver is quicker than the Williamson turn, but it requires a higher degree of precision and is more suitable for smaller vessels. The Anderson turn, on the other hand, is a rapid maneuver that brings the ship back to the person in the water in the shortest possible time. However, it requires a skilled crew and is best suited for smaller vessels in calm sea conditions. Each of these maneuvers has its pros and cons, and the choice of maneuver will depend on a variety of factors. The key is to choose the maneuver that will bring the ship back to the person in the water as quickly and as safely as possible. Choosing the right maneuver is crucial for a successful rescue operation. Once the ship is back at the overboard location, the search begins. The open sea is a vast expanse and finding a person in its depths can be like searching for a needle in a haystack. But with a systematic approach, the odds of success increase significantly. One of the most common search patterns is the expanding square search. As the name suggests, the vessel moves in an ever-widening square spiral from the last known position of the person overboard. This method is particularly effective when the location of the person in the water is uncertain. Another search pattern is the sector search. This pattern involves the vessel moving in a series of arcs, each one larger than the last, radiating out from the initial overboard point. It's a solid choice when the person's location is known with reasonable certainty. The track line search is a pattern where the vessel retraces its original path, based on the assumption that the person overboard drifted along the same course. This pattern is often used when the overboard incident happened some time ago. Lastly, there's the parallel sweep search. Here the vessel moves back and forth in straight lines, covering a large area of sea. It's a good option when the search area is large and the person's location is vague. The choice of search pattern depends on several factors. The last known position of the person, sea conditions, and available resources. Successful search patterns can mean the difference between life and death. In any rescue operation, communication and coordination are key. When an overboard incident occurs, 
the vessel's bridge becomes the nerve center of the rescue operation. It's here that decisions are made, and instructions are given. Yet, this is only effective if there's a clear line of communication between the bridge, the crew, and any other parties involved. Crew members must work together like a well-oiled machine, each knowing their role and performing it swiftly and efficiently. With lives hanging in the balance, there's no room for confusion or miscommunication. At the same time, nearby vessels and rescue services must be alerted and coordinated with. This is where technology like radar, automatic identification systems, and satellite communication comes into play. They help pinpoint the person's location, making the search quicker and more efficient. With good communication and coordination, rescue efforts can be maximized. In the race against time to save lives at sea, every second counts and every action matters. Prevention is always better than cure, especially at sea. The first line of defense against overboard incidents is safety awareness. This starts with safety drills, a crucial part of life on board. These drills familiarize everyone with the ship's safety procedures, ensuring a swift and effective response in case of emergencies. Equally important is the proper usage of life jackets. Life jackets, when worn correctly, provide buoyancy and visibility, increasing chances of survival and rescue. Remember, a life jacket stored away is of no use in an emergency. But prevention doesn't stop at drills and life jackets. Both passengers and crew play vital roles in maintaining a safe environment on board. This means adhering to safety guidelines, being mindful of one's surroundings and reporting any potential hazards promptly. In the end, it's about creating a culture of safety. A ship where everyone is aware, vigilant and ready to respond is a ship that's prepared for anything. Awareness and vigilance are our best defenses against overboard incidents. To recap, immediate action, effective communication and well-executed search patterns are crucial in overboard rescue operations. The swift release of a life ring, the right maneuver and a calculated search pattern can be the difference between life and death. Technology aids our efforts with radar, AIS and satellite communication being vital tools. But the most critical factor remains prevention and awareness. Stay vigilant, stay safe, and remember, every second counts when someone falls overboard. Thank you for watching and don't forget subscribing to get every news and I wish you a bon voyage and safe travels. I hope you found this information helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, take care and have a great journey.